Hi everyone! So today we'll be comparing sap greens. I have the Rembrandt, the Windsor & Newton, and the Daniel Smith versions of this color. Um, I actually wasn't going to do multi-pigmented colors, but um, a few of you have asked like, hey, could you compare these as well? So, well, this, this is gonna be one of them. And hopefully we'll see more later on as well. Um, so right, let's get into it. Zoom in. Oops, a bit too much. Okay, here we go. Again, as per usual, I none of these pans have been pre-wetted. I'm going in with a wet brush. Oh wait, I should tell you first. Um, I've written down the pigments of each of these so we could sort of compare how different they are. Right now, we could absolutely tell that they're completely different in that Rembrandt is PY150 and PG7. That's Nickel Azo Yellow and Thalo Green, um, Thalo Green Blue Shade. Windsor & Newton's is PG36, which is Thalo Green Yellow Shade, and PY110, I believe that's like in ISO, ISO something yellow. And then Daniel Smith's is P048, which is the quinacridone color that they use to make quin gold hues nowadays, and PG7 and PY150, same as Rembrandt. So let's see the differences. Wet brush. Already getting lots of pigment right away. Easy to re-wet. Rembrandt was actually my first sap green, I believe. Yes. I've always thought it was a bit too bright for me and looking at this now, I do still feel that way. A very nice yellow green. Um, again, a bit too bright for my personal liking. I prefer my sap greens to be slightly more muted. So let's see if Windsor and Newton does better. Cause this one, it might be a bit too bright for me because of the PY150, because the nickel as a yellow tends to glow, but we'll see. The PY110 doesn't really glow Yes, right away we're seeing now that it's much more muted. I'm not sure if you could see through the camera there. But yes, this one feels much more natural. Oh, wow. I love this. When I swatched it earlier, I liked it, but now that it's now that it's side by side to the Rembrandt one, I'm really loving it. Yes, much more muted, not as bright and vibrant. When, when compared to the Rembrandt one, the Windsor & Newton almost feels like olive green, but it's not, it's not an olive green. Oh wow, I can't believe I've been I've been painting with this one for a long time. And it's it's too bright. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, if you like bright sap greens, then by all means, but just personally my preference isn't there. Okay, let's see if Daniel Smith Everyone seems to love Dan Ooh. Ooh, wow, that's so very similar to Windsor & Newton. Yes. That is so beautiful. All right. I'd say it could get quite dark in mass tone. 
that's interesting. I'll see if I could go back and do that for the Windsor and Newton one as well. Nope, Windsor and Newton can't get as like that black, black green, if you know what I mean. Am I gonna be able to show you on camera? There you go. If you could see this, it's still a very green green, but this is almost like a black green. Usually those black dark colors are because the color is very transparent. So once you layer them a lot, then it becomes almost black. Okay, anyways, we'll wait for those to dry and then we'll be right back. I'm really loving these two. And I'm back. The swatches have completely dried. And I can't believe it, guys. I really like the Windsor & Newton one. Rembrandt was basically my very first sap green and I... Everyone online seemed to rave about sap green and uh, Tio on Parka Blogs even made a video on like, you know, who doesn't love sap green? And I was like, me, I don't love sap green. <laughs> but that's because I was using Rembrandt's version and it's just so bright. So it's, it's a yellow green and supposedly supposed to be natural, more muted, but the Rembrandt one, I think it's because of the PY150 Nicolazzo yellow that makes it so bright and vibrant. Now that it's dried down, there's a bit of a color shift where that bright and vibrancy has, has just, it's just lost. And it's, it's much more muted than earlier when we swatched it out, but it's still very much more yellow and more, more vibrant than these two, where these two are more muted greens. And now I can definitely tell why he made the video, Who Doesn't Love Sap Green? Because I love these two. So if any of you have been following me, I've been loving Serpentine Genuine for my sap green option, but Oh my goodness, Windsor & Newton is really making me like it. I feel like this version of um, Sap Green by Daniel Smith, I haven't used the, the earlier version with P049 and PG7, but this one feels a bit too, too dark for me, too dark and muted. Mm, it, it feels like there's too much, it leans too much too blue, even though there's no blue in there, but there's a PG7. But yeah, I think maybe the brown from the P048 maybe put it off. But out of these three, I'm, I'm loving Windsor and Newton. I'm gonna have to change this in my palette soon sometime. I'd love to know which sap green you guys are using and are you like really passionate about it? Or are you somewhere like me where you're, you're using a sap green that you feel like it's just too bright maybe? Am I using the right sap green? Who knows? Maybe someone down below could tell you whether your sap green is too bright or something. But yeah, I'm so amazed at how the hues are quite different. As always, I'll be putting the scans right after this. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.